Hey guys, welcome back. So now with getting back into Devil's Reign, I wanted to take a minute and cover the Winter Soldier tie-in because with the way that it gives us this Mayor Fisk versus Bucky Barnes matchup, it's really interesting and not only for what they set up for Bucky from here moving forward, but really also with the way that these two crossing paths is even set up with the both of them in the pursuit of truth, which quickly turns into a demonstration of what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch your spills every week and don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so for this tie-in of Devil's Reign, which sits between part two and part three, and with doing so, it heavily focuses on the frustration of Wilson Fisk with him not knowing Daredevil's identity, but knowing that he had it at one point. And through the main series, we've seen Wilson Fisk express this frustration because for Fisk, over the years, aside from his hunger for power, his archives of information that he's collected about different heroes and different villains, it's been a crucial tool for him to use to either gain leverage, use his blackmail, or even at times to examine certain people to not only know their abilities, but also recognize patterns and figure out what makes them tick. So for Fisk, when he had the identity of Daredevil and that was effectively taken from him by the children of Zebediah Kilgrave, for him, this was a violation on many levels because it would have been one thing if somebody had just broken in and taken the file because he has the resources to get that information replaced. Like he can find the people to fill in the gaps, but instead he knew the file was still there. But back at the time, he had realized even with the file there, he couldn't read it because when Daredevil's identity was wiped from everyone's memory, they could not get that information back unless Matthew Murdock wanted wanted them to know. And at this point in time, Wilson Fisk, he still doesn't know how this was pulled off, but he knows that something was done and that he had the information before, which again really is one of the main driving motives behind Devil's Reign. And it's here where we find Fisk at Gracie Mansion, where at this time under his orders, the doors are reinforced and only the guards without families are working security detail. And his reason for doing so is because he needs to perform his evolution. And the reason why is because for Fisk, he's hoping to cleanse his mind and his will from needing to know Daredevil's identity. Because at this point, the whole situation is haunting him and because of this he's like in the mirror giving himself affirmations telling himself he doesn't need to know daredevil's identity and he's telling himself that it's okay that he can't read the file and at this point he's really just doing this so he can get a good night's sleep so it's not like he's trying to change the course of his will by any means but instead this is his solution for getting some rest so he's not staying up for days straight but with this happening there's a few things i want to point out here because for one fisk doesn't know at this point that this was taken from him by the children of zebediah kilgrave like we seen previously but also on top of information being taken from him and this information being about daredevil of all people but on top of these things we're seeing fisk go through its struggle of him not being able to read this file and that influence being in constant conflict with his will because prior to any of this, it's been proven a number of times that the will of Wilson Fisk is strong. And one of the examples that I like is from Marvel Team Up Annual Number no. 4 back in 1981, when at the time, Kilgrave had botched like a $6 million drug deal. And when this happened, Fisk had demanded to see the person who was responsible. But of course, when this happened, the meeting went left. But when Kilgrave had tried to leave, he was then stopped by Fisk's warning shot to where then Kilgrave told Fisk to do it again, but this time point the cane at your own head, only to then have Wilson Fisk just just say no, which was a huge shock to Kilgrave since Daredevil couldn't even resist his influence. But with us just knowing how powerful the will of Wilson Fisk is, and it's like you take that and you put it up against the children of Kilgrave who use the machine to combine and amplify their power to alter the world's memory of the identity of Daredevil, which now for Fisk, for his will to be working against this, is like the recipe for insomnia. But also at this point with him using Kilgrave's power to suggestively influence others, and it's here where we see him use it on himself to influence influence himself to get some sleep. But also while this is happening just outside the Gracie mansion, we also see Bucky Barnes who's made his way here to get to the files of Wilson Fisk because for Bucky at this point he hasn't slept in three weeks. But in his case it's more of a thing of him recently having downtime. But with him having no missions to run and no one to fight, his mind just keeps dwelling on the past. But with there being so many gaps in his memory and him losing sleep while he's awake, this has then caused him to hallucinate his dreams to where for him, while he's awake and dreaming, they would blend with the real world. And while he's making his way into Gracie Manor, we see him kind of describe how these daymares <laughs> play out. And I guess that's what you call it because it's like a nightmare, but it's a, a daydream at the same time. But as he would describe, first he sees everything go dark and then there's pools and rivers of blood, but also at the same time, it's raining tears. And on top of that, he sees all the faces 
of his victims, with all of them in their last expression just before you kill them. But even in these dreams, he does see signs of hope, but they're too high above and he can't reach them to where when he does attempt to, his arm just weighs him down and he just sinks into a freezing pool of blood. But for Bucky, with him making his way to Gracie Manor, he tries to reassure himself while pushing through these dreams that he's still seeing that what he's going to find here in the files of Wilson Fisk, that these answers or this truth is going to bring him peace. But even still for Bucky, with him dealing with these dreams and them blending with the real world, he's still able to take down the guards on the outside and make his way in. Because even with his dreams augmenting his reality, for the most part, he's able to recognize what's actually there and what's not. And aside from some of the visuals, it's really more of a psychological pool that's causing him to constantly regain his focus rather than him seeing the things from the dreams that look crazy. And it's like he's not aware if they're real or not. So it's like for Bucky, he sees reality and he recognizes it, but his dreams will then also give him moments where things seem more exaggerated than what they really are. But for Bucky, when he gets inside, he makes his way to the vault of Wilson Fisk, to where at that point he finds that getting to the file is actually easier than he expected, with no alarms going off, so he's able to just reach in and break the lock. But as soon as he reaches in and he sees his file, Wilson Fisk then pops up behind him. And when Bucky turns around, like from Bucky's perspective, Wilson Fisk is looking like into the Spider-Verse Wilson Fisk. Like he has a crazy hulking stature. But when Bucky sees him here, he immediately tries to reason with Fisk. And Bucky tells Fisk like, look, I'll pay for my file because Bucky sold his house in India. So he has the money to cover the cost. And Bucky tells Fisk that he just wants this file so he can finally get some sleep. But with him trying to reason with Fisk, Fisk is not responding. And then it's here where Bucky notices that Fisk has blood all over his fists. And it's right then where Bucky starts to put together like why the house is empty. But we also find out in this moment that Wilson Fisk is sleepwalking with the seeing that his eyes are closed. But then when he finally speaks, he then just yells, I don't need to know. And right away, he just swings on Bucky. Because for Mayor Fisk, with him attempting to use Kilgrave's powers to make him get some sleep, but his will was just too strong for him to stay down. Which at this point now has him sleepwalking and sleep swinging. And when he punches Bucky in the face, Bucky's just like, okay, yeah, my jaw's broke in real life. And right away, you can tell his jaw was fractured on impact. But for Bucky, even with him seeing things like with the exaggeration from his insomnia, once again, his training kicks in. And as a result, he evades from completely getting pummeled while also sticking to the mission while grabbing his file as well as a few others. But through the course of this with both Bucky and Mayor Fisk, both seeing things not exactly for what they are. And for Fisk, with him going after Bucky, he believes that he has his hands on Daredevil and that when he kills Daredevil, him and Mary can more or less just go on and live their lives happily ever after. While on the other hand for Bucky, to where in his case, he can actually see what's going on with Fisk coming after him, but he's also constantly reminded of more reasons of why he needs to know the truth. And this matchup is really like the case of an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. And it only gets worse when Fisk breaks Bucky's real arm and tosses him up the stairs to the next room, which also quickly shows us which one of the two is not the immovable object, figuratively speaking, at least. But at this point, with Bucky only having his bionic arm to fight with, he grabs a knife, but it doesn't help because Mayor Fisk is just constantly coming at him, saying that he doesn't need to read the file because if he kills Daredevil now, it won't really matter who Daredevil's true identity really is. With Mayor Fisk believing once again that Bucky is Daredevil, but then it's here where you have this moment where Bucky is running out of options and he goes for the advice that he was given by Steve as far as reaching for the flag, which in this case is way more literal with Bucky using the flag to blind Mayor Fisk, who already had his eyes closed, but even still wrapping the flag around his head, it threw Fisk off well enough for Bucky to make his way out and get away. Because for Fisk, there's really no telling what he sees in this moment in comparison to Bucky's perception. But even for Mayor Fisk, I'd imagine that his dream is showing him a type of layout of the house with Daredevil throwing the flag or something over his head. But unlike Bucky, his situation is more dream than reality. And because of that, the details of what Mayor Fisk is perceiving, it may very well be even crazier than what we put together by just the few words that he's saying. But also in this moment, as Bucky leaves and the ceiling starts coming down, he admits that there's a part of him that just wants to stay there and possibly get killed under the wreckage so that then he may finally get some sleep like resting in peace type of sleep but again his training kicks in and it tells him to complete the mission and get out of there but more or less with all this happening 
and the Gracie mansion just destroyed. The fire department and the police show up and Mayor Fisk is more or less just like, oh, I just had the most wonderful dream, which again for him was pretty much a dream of him beating the mess out of Daredevil. But then when we follow Bucky, who once again had grabbed more files than just his own, to where we see in his case, he's destroyed the files of others like Moon Knight and Darkhawk, but he's put himself through all of this to get the file of the Winter Soldier so that he can get the truth about every person he's killed, every person who's made him pull the trigger, in hopes that this information will fill the gaps of his memory and cause his living nightmare to end. But when he looks at the file, it's not the file of the Winter Soldier, but instead this file is a breakdown of James Buchanan Barnes, meaning that effectively though it is Bucky's file, but it wasn't put together by Wilson Fisk, but instead by someone more powerful. And even though they didn't like initial or autograph their research, so at this point Bucky doesn't know who accumulated all this info, but with looking through his file, he does notice that this person was thorough because the information on Bucky starts from his date of birth. It has information on his parents, it has his school report cards, like this person knows that Bucky failed chemistry, but it also covers his time with Captain America up to Bucky's assumed death, but even with that setting back the research during Bucky's time with Department X, but even still this file just picks up where it left off, confirming that Bucky Barnes has 374 kills over the span of 78 years, with only 91 of those kills performed as part of the Winter Soldier program. And with how the information is laid out in this file, it's almost as if somebody is still pulling the strings and Bucky is still active, leaving him to wonder, like even after he's been free, if he's still unknowingly involved in some larger game. But at least for Bucky, for the first time in a long time, he's given clarity. But even with him getting his hands on this extensive file about his past, he's far from closure, which is exactly what Bucky's looking to get next, because whoever wrote this file, they're not going to make it to the end of the year. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And we'll do it again in the next one. All right. Later.